promise I'm gonna try to go as fast as humanly possible. Um, I love creative mornings. Uh, so I'm gonna try to get, contain my excitement because we're talking about my, my favorite subject, which is creativity, and my favorite phrase, which is everyone is creative. So the mystery, which um, I'm gonna stretch it, right? How many of you guys even heard of Outrageous with Nate? A few of you, oh my gosh, thank you, that's awesome. Um, if you have it, then the mystery is, I, let's meet, you know, so you get to know a little bit more. Um, I, I'm gonna go so fast, and if I'm talking too fast, please grab me afterwards, and if you're like, he said something in about a 2,000 second, you know, whatever, what was that? Or that quote, or that book you mentioned, um, and I would love to, to meet up with you. Anyway, I deliver content to PBS Digital Studios, if uh, you ever had, very first, right, Sarah Green, uh, in the art assignment, which I absolutely love. Um, we work for the same, work, work with the same people, and then I also deliver to curiosity.com, which is an offshoot of Discovery Channel. Uh, it's a mystery, uh, all of it. Uh, what we do every day is a mystery, and I'm chasing, uh, that's basically I'm trying to reach kids uh, in high school, I'd say middle, middle up, upper middle to, to high school age, um, which is a mystery, that's, that's just a mystery in itself. Um, but anyway, I have to do this because the, the slide afterwards will make absolutely no sense, and I, I love, it's gonna look a little awkward. If you don't mind just standing up for just a second, hold your coffee, don't kill yourself. Um, you're not gonna have to do much, I promise. Um, but, uh, so, If you don't mind, uh, this is my new favorite song, if you guys don't know Brett Denon, uh, just gently move. Just a little bit. You don't hurt yourself. You have to move. So, Brittany set it up. I really don't care. You just got, it'll make sense in a minute, okay? I love this song. All right, before he gets hurt, you got spear your coffee. That's good. Thank you for appeasing me on that one, sorry. Every time I've spoke, when I used to teach at high school, college, whatever, uh, my thing was I would make kids dance and they hated it, but I loved it. Um, so uh, it's just my thing. If I go to speak, uh, I'm sorry, like I, I'm gonna, you're gonna have to move. Anyway, but I always tell kids, and I will tell you in this, you know, I'm gonna steal from my favorite book. If there's one thing you should go grab afterwards, steal like an artist. It's a little book, you could like, uh, literally coffee break it. It's awesome. If you don't have it or you haven't read it, grab it. This is from here, curiosity, kindness, stamina, a willingness to look stupid. Um, I like getting up here and dancing in front of you because I'm terrible at it. I know like you, we all kind of just made fools of ourselves, which is great. Um, but man, when it comes to this, I can't tell you enough with outrageous or whatever you're doing, right? You've got to have a willingness to look stupid. Um, this is, if you haven't seen Outrageous with Nate, I'm going to show you just a real quick trailer. We tried to put together everything we kind of did in 2016. Um, so yeah. There you are. So that's very brief, kind of what we did um, in two minutes or less. But uh, yeah, so I am really, really, and I'll get into this real quick uh, in a minute here. I am, I love creativity, I love the arts, but I love connecting and finding it where it's happening outside of the art, art room. I love being in the art room, but that is gonna be the, the crux 
of trying to make change and get kids excited. So uh, this, sorry, this is, I'll just talk over this, but if I'm home, uh, I'm working out of a tree house. If you ever want to stop by and you're in Irvington, um, I would love for you to come by. Uh, I edit, try to work out of there. So I love Mr. Rogers, so I made a little intro at one point. Uh, I, I, yeah, we can talk about that later. Um, so, I, yeah, he's, uh, I have a man crush on him, but point being is he's amazing. But long story short, um, yeah, so that's kind of where I work. I love just being outside, so, uh, but a mystery. So on that note, why I started doing this, I want to give you a quick background, uh, very quick. But I love art history, and I love going to art museums, and I, I feel bad saying this, but art museums are kind of pretentious sometimes. Um, and famous artists are very pretentious, right? I always tell people there's more to an artist, right, than a placard on a wall. So what I love digging into is making sure that artists seem human, right? We forget. Like, you go in there and you see a Picasso or you see a Van Gogh or whatever, and you're like, oh, my gosh, you know. And you don't, we forget. They were human, right? They put their pants on typically probably one leg at a time, right? So Andy Warhol, great example. I love him. Uh, we're getting ready to go to New York to film some stuff, and I'm specifically going to where he bought cake every day. It's my favorite thing we're going to go do. He lived on cake, if you didn't know that. That's why he was pasty pale. Um, he probably knew, too, he was bald as a bat, and he loved wigs. Um, and, yeah, and one of my favorite stories is he went to a famous art collector, and he didn't know what to paint, and he paid her 50 bucks. He's like, tell me, what should I paint? And she just basically says, well, what do you love? He's like, I love money. And she's like, well, paint money. And so he started painting money. Um, just all those little fun facts. I like to know, like, cream or sugar in the coffee. What, their dog, what was their dog like? Like, what did it feel like to be in their space? And for that, I think if I start digging into that, and whether it's an artist, it's an engineer, I don't care if it's a designer, whoever, they start becoming human. And then hopefully, you guys included, right, um, and myself, and the students that I'm trying to reach to, they connect, right? They start to understand better, like, oh my gosh, I can't, that, that person's human. Um, so basically, I started off about four or five years ago and just tried, like, right? How many guys have started a project not knowing <laughs> at all what was going to happen, right? So the mystery was, I had no idea. <laughs> I basically was like, I want to do something on pointillism. Uh, I had a friend who had an airplane, and I'm like, let's make a giant pointillism project and look at it from the sky. Um, and we put it together, and locally, uh, luckily, locally, WFYI, after I did this, I, I emailed them and said, I need help. <laughs> and they're like, well, we can give you a bunch of equipment. And I'm like, awesome. So that led us down the road of doing a lot of stuff. And I don't know if you noticed, but I, have, I love Creative Mornings. Dan Thompson, I don't know if you saw, he was up there. Uh, Justin Vining, uh, David Holly Combs. I've got <laughs> episodes on all of them. I am very proud of the fact that I'm from the Midwest. As you can imagine, um, everyone I talk to when we go, they just assume we're from Boston, right? Oh, you're in PBS, right, Boston? Like, no, we're, we're in India. And they're like, what? Like, that's weird. Um, but I love it. And I love grabbing local talent. And I love grabbing, obviously, talent from all, all around. So, and just here's some other clips of that. Real quick, though, what I'm going to try to get into here is the brain, creativity, definitions, Florence, Italy, Steve Jobs, attempts, steam, and hands-on, hands-free, hands-on. I always tell kids, I actually don't want them to. I want them to watch my show, but then I want you to put the stupid thing down and go make um, I always say I'm trying to create a hands-on experience for a hands-free generation. <laughs> um, I love technology. I'm obsessed with it, but I'm obsessed with get, just making, right? So if you guys didn't already know this, this date is actually a little dated. But point being is, did you know if you have four years of arts exposure in a school, right, you, act, you, you score 104 points higher on the SAT. It's, it's a fact. We all know this. Even the people who make the SAT know this, and people who make decisions about whether the arts, plural, stay in schools. We all know this. And I hear the argument all the time. 63 points on verbal, 44 on the math. Um, and then there's this stat, which actually, this is a really old stat. I was trying to pull out some new data, which I find fascinating. Lucas Oil brought in 193 uh, mil, and the arts in Indy brought in 460. So, you know, twofold, baby. The arts are effective, all right? Um, sorry, I'm not really a football person. But, uh, but anyway, point being is, it, we know this data. And when I go to talk to businesses, which is my second most favorite thing to do, because I need to prove to them it's important. The arts are affecting way more than just making turkey hands, right? We all know this. I'm talking to the, to the, I know I'm talking to the choir here, but I'll put some data in your mind. So what I try to do is change the conversation. Now, I was going to do this activity, uh, but for sake of time, and I know myself, I, I do this with a lot of kids. I give them a piece of paper, so I'll just explain it to you. There's 30 circles on it, and I tell them, draw something. You have, 30, you have 45 seconds. Draw something in every circle. 
just out of, just guessing, how many of you guys, how many circles do they actually fill up in 45 seconds? Anybody know? Out of 30. Anybody got a guess? Five? You're actually, you're close. The average is eight. Eight. Now, the funny part was, I don't know if you heard me explain, but when I tell them this, I never say everything has to be different. I never say every circle has to be filled with something unique. But how many of you guys, when you're creating something, you feel the pressure of like, it's got to be original. <laughs> it's got to be one off. If it's not, I used to deal, I have kids cry in the art room. They're like, but it looks just like that one. And I want it to look just so original. You got, I feel that pressure. It's got to be a precisely unique, doesn't exist. And I hate that pressure because we all feel it and kids feel it, right? That's part of why we, I say we grow out of creativity. And that's what I'm trying to do, is find a way, right when you're at that crux, and I bet you could guess the age when it happens, right? You go from an art room full of like third graders, right? How many raise their hand when I tell them, who's creative in here? Who's an artist? And they're like, oh my gosh, I am. They just want to show it to me. <laughs> Middle school, it's like, maybe, maybe me. I don't know, that's kind of weird. Is she looking at me? I, I, you know, high school, it's like, not me. And it's those people that are real weird down the hallway. Um, it just, it just dwindles, 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 And we put them in silos, right? So what I'm trying to do is remind kids, too. We all know this. When you learn art, and this is just a lady copying, copying in a museum. I always tell people, copy, 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 steal. That's why I love that book, steal. With, and we go into the definitions of what I mean by that. But we get this pressure, and I'm like, you know what? You want to know how Michelangelo learned? They put a sculpture in front of him, and they said, make it look exactly like that. And once you learn that, you'll start finding your own thing. And that pressure to be original, and I'm trying to get kids to understand, learn, watch, repeat, copy, copy, learn, figure out, find your style by borrowing, stealing. There's nothing is original. <laughs> I remind myself of this all the time when I'm making something. I'm probably not the first person to talk about Van Gogh. I'm probably not the first person to talk about Picasso. Who's off, what kind of collective information is already out there? And this is the book, by the way, Steal Like an Artist. It's teeny tiny. I, I can't say enough. I should really get paid by the publisher. Uh, and I love this one. Okay, this is one of my favorite Steve Jobs quotes. It says, good artists copy, great artists steal. We have always been shameless about stealing great ideas. You know what's really funny about that quote? He stole that quote. That's a Picasso quote. Picasso said that. <laughs> oh, I just find that absolutely hysterical. Anyway, so outside of art, I have an obsession with brain science. And the reason why I want to understand what happens, like we just talked about middle school, right? Something happens and they lose their, their faith and their creativity. And I know there's, there's got to be some brain research on this. And I'm digging into it because I want to know, like literally on a molecular level, what is happening and how can I help it? Because, man, if I can get kids out of high school and they can still believe, you know what? I may not be a painter, but, man, I'm creative. Then I'm going to feel like we won because that's going to be awesome. So to give you very, very, very minimal, um, if you want to talk later, we can talk brain science. But uh, I'm just going to talk frontal lobe for right now. So the frontal lobe is where abstract thought happens. It's what separates you from a horse, right? They typically can't <laughs> think abstractly, but you can. And what I always tell kids, and I always ask these two questions, and, and, and I'll ask you guys without prefacing their answer. How many of you guys would try salami egg ice cream? If I had it in bowls, I love it. Yeah, Joey and I were like, yeah, why not? A few of us, right? I ask a group of kids, and all of them are like, do it, bring it. Like, I think that could be good, right? <laughs> kids do that. Now, we can, I bet within seconds, like the pink elephant, right? You're like, that would taste gross, salami, if it's raw, like the eggs, I can't, like, well, you know, vegan, that's gonna work. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> we go through it pretty fast of saying, no, we're not gonna do it. A kid doesn't have that. They can go abstract fast, like rocket fast. The other thing is, I ask kids, like, how does a horse pick its nose? And we're like, that's stupid. That doesn't work. I get 50 hands in the air. Carrot. They grab the carrot, they jam it up. They get a friend, the friend jabs it up. <laughs> or the other one sticks his hoof in its nose. I mean, it's amazing what I get so fast. Like, they're like, yeah, yeah, this is very possible. <laughs> very possible. Um, so it's just, yeah, I don't know. And the research, now here's the great part. If you dig into the brain science, here's what's, brain imaging is like in its infancy. It's like at Atari level. We don't know jack is what I have realized, right? So point being is we don't know. But what they have figured out is fourth to fifth grade. Fourth to fifth grade is that crucial, crucial year 
And then you get into middle school and it gets even worse, right? So that's what we know. And that's why I'm trying to hone in on what PBS always tells me. Why are you trying to grab the weird age? <laughs> Let Disney, like, regurgitate them later and then we'll bring them back. And I'm like, no, we can't. Like, you know, I, 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 that's the group. That's the group. That's why. And so as you know, um, kids are very open. Posture's everything. If you guys watch a really good TED Talk, um, Amy Cuddy did a study about body and about your posture, right? And kids are always like, yeah, like I miss, when I used to teach elementary school, leg hugs. Anybody around kids? It gets annoying because you want to walk, but they just, man, they're always like, hello, Mr. Heck, you know, and like, I just, it's great. And then as, you know, people were like, ooh, um, we get really kind of nervous about it. But posture is everything. And not only that, Teflon and Velcro. I always tell kids, Teflon and Velcro, did you know to hold a positive thought, to keep it, you've got to think about it for 15 seconds. 15 seconds at least, you've got to think about it over and over for 15 seconds for it to hold. We are negative thoughts, man, they're just like, boom. But positive, just whew, Teflon, right? So, I mean, posture and your, the way you think, there's so much involved in, I think, what happens with us losing our creativity, or what I like to call developing out of it. Now, this one, you guys are going to love. This is a study done at five different major universities, like Harvard and Cornell. Anyway, they had a bunch of students, and they brought them in, and they asked questions about, why do we develop out of creativity? And they asked people, give me the first three words that you associate when you hear the word creativity. Now, I don't know if this is true. This is a study, they did it, and I'm, I'm still baffled by it. First, first word that came out was agony, poison. <laughs> this is terrible, right? Like, and vomit. <laughs> I was like, really? There's people that that's what you think of when you think of creativity, agony, poison, and vomit. That's terrible, but it's true. I'm like, ah, oh, how many people you know when you're like, if they would have had to do that art project, which by the way, thank you for participating, and I'm glad no one got killed because I really did not know if it was going to work. Um, that was a mystery in itself, it's still standing. Um, but point being is, th they're freaked out. You say like, hey, draw something, or draw someone, or can you be creative with this? They're like, <gasps> no, no. Like, what do you think I am? Like, I'm, you know. Um, but here's the, here's the reality of it, and you guys know it. I'm speaking to the choir on this, right? The World Economic Forum reports, this is a new one, and Jason actually just say this with me, uh, that creativity will become one of the top three skills in demand by 2020. It is the number one thing businesses want. It is what they want, right? When they come in, that's what they want. They're like, okay, you got the, okay, you know that. Sh are you creative? Like, innovative? We want innovative products, right? That's what we want, so why do we not, that's my argument. Why are we not so like, you get every kid in art, get every kid in music, get every theater, like we need them in there. Develop it, save it, get them on it. Creativity and innovations, everything. Um, Florence, Italy. Anybody ever had a chance to go to Florence? Pretty awesome city. Um, you know, they got that thing, you know, a few things here and there that, to look at. Um, Florence is awesome, okay? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, basically, <laughs> it's, it, was a, it was a hub of awesomeness. I don't know if you knew this, but there was a plague going around at the time. During the, 200 people a day were dying. <laughs> um, but yet, for some reason, somehow, this entire city, which was not very big, smaller than Indy, I'll just give you an idea, they were supporting and making more art than we have ever seen, right? I mean, there's that little thing, like the Sistine, you know, that Sistine Chapel thing. Um, you know, all of it. They were just creating so much. And there was the Medici family. Tons of support. Everybody was like, make art. It's important. People are dying. We get it. But art is important. Culture is important. They were, the Medicis were like the Glicks, which, by the way, I love Marianne Glick, and they're, they're so supportive. Um, yeah, sorry, I had to say that. But point being is, yeah, they, they just, what can we do? What can we do? How can we make it? And some cool stuff that I love that they were doing. Michelangelo, if you didn't know this, was not a painter. Actually, I always tell kids, if I were to first say that he was a painter and he was here because he had anger management issues because he basically lived off little bits of bread and wine um, and didn't wash, uh, it was his father that told him that you're not supposed to take a bath, which is kind of gross. But anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, but point being is he would never consider himself a painter. He was a sculptor. That was what he was doing. But here's what's really cool. Imagine if you went into a job interview and they, weren't, they didn't care about your... Oh, you, you know how many guys have gone into that? Go, I'm gonna go in and, oh wait a minute, I have to have 10 years experience in this. Crap, I don't have that. What if you went in and they're like, there's a skill you have, and I know you have no experience with this job, but the skill, the skill set you have is awesome, and that will carry over. Michelangelo got hired by the Pope, Pope Julius, which I could go into so many fun stories about Pope Julius in a second. But point being is, 
hired him not because he was a painter. He knew he wasn't. He had no, he had no reference to it, but he knew he, Michelangelo was creative. He had a skill. And they were more concerned about the skill than the resume, which I'll just leave that at that. So creativity is the catalyst for social and economic juggernauts of growth. We know it, it's a fact. That's why Florence, by the way, did you know in World War II, Hitler wanted to have the entire city of Florence destroyed. Did you know that? Guess what happened? The generals that were in Florence, just they basically said, we can't do it. I can't destroy it, it is too beautiful. That's why it survived. Like, it's amazing, right? Like, it was the art and the, the culture and all that creativity, they just couldn't do it. They actually defied what Hitler wanted because it was just, they couldn't do it, they couldn't destroy it. It's just, it's a, gosh, what creativity, that's why this is so important, I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, so, all right, so real quick here, in incubators, right? I don't know if you knew this, but here's some Procter Gamble stuff, all this stuff, the Swiffer, sandpaper. Here's how this stuff, and I tell kids, products you take for granted. But these companies decided that they needed to tear down the silos. Kind of like what you see maybe at a Google, right? Where they just like start blending up different categories. So we have engineers playing with the designers. And then they decided, you know, I'm gonna bring these guys into this area of the building. And all of a sudden, they're working together. That's where the Swiffer came. It was them working together, figuring it out. And then there's, this dude, right, Steve Jobs. Now, I, I, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm obsessed with Apple products, all right, I've covered them. But point being is, probably just because I love the risk and the amazingness. Now, I don't know if you knew this, this is the first iPhone, right, 10 years ago, which seems like two days ago, but point being is, did you know, you gotta go afterwards, if you can find them, all right, watch the Kino, six rows up, in, there's all the design team. <laughs> They're all drunk, by the way. Um, because they're freaking out. Because this phone was a prototype. It was not functional. If, he, if Steve just played one song a little too long, if he played one movie a little too long, it was gonna crash, it was done. And they're all freaking out as one by one, like, that was my thing, and then they're like, oh. and then another one's like, okay, that worked, oh my gosh. And you never know it, like Steve puts on a great performance. He knew that they were not ready at all. It was a to total prototype. But I love it, he's just like, we're gonna do it. We're risking it, we're gonna put it out there. I don't care. I mean, it's just, yeah, flabbergasting. But point being is, I'm gonna show you this. The, the, this, this is really fun, I promise I'm, if I'm moving too fast here, but got the uh, percolator coffee and the dot matrix printer. Did you know, um, HP, they were killing it during the 70s, 80s. They gave them tons of time to play, kinda like Google. 25% of their time, they're like, go do something. Guys watching, because we had before, right, if you're old enough, that the strip, the printer, right, all that stuff. But he's watching his coffee maker on his desk, and he's watching it drip. And he's like, wait a minute, that, that might just work. They take that idea, that technology, and that's how they came out with what we worked with today. Just playing, looking, observing. I mean, from a coffee maker to that. Um, and what I love about it, this is the guy who actually invented it. He just, his famous quote is, we had tremendous fun. They were just having fun, making stuff, inventing, creating, looking at a coffee maker, getting inspired. And I always tell people, innovation encased in there is play. And inside play is creativity. It's all about it. It's all about it. Um, man, I mean, play is so big. Call it free time, you know, whatever you want to call it, that 25, 10% of like go, whatever you want to call it, it's play. It's play. It's important. Do it. <laughs> Here's a great uh, quote, play is our brain's favorite way of learning. Here's another, play is the beginning of knowledge. I like that one, I have that written on my wall, like yes, play, experiment, challenge. Now one last thing I'm gonna keep talking about, in order to do that though, and I think you guys all know this, innovation connected to play, play takes time, right? I'm always freaked out when I have enough of it, and attempts, right? This is the one thing at schools I harp on because we don't give them enough time for attempts. So, I, I don't know if you knew this, Thomas Edison, right? Anybody know how many prototypes he had? This is a pretty common one. 3,000, 3,000 prototypes <laughs> for a light bulb. Held 1,093 patents. Um, pretty insane. That takes some time to create something like that. Then you got this bad boy, Dyson. The overpriced vacuum that is quite sexy, but still it's overpriced. But anyway, it's really cool. The point being is 5,127 failed prototypes. Failed. Van Gogh, 864 paintings, 1,037 drawings, sold one while he was alive, if you didn't already knew that, 
did it for the right reasons, but sadly enough, yeah, too bad. It's terrible. But Picasso, I don't know if you knew this, he created over 20,000 pieces of artwork. 20,000. The guy was nuts. I've been reading about him recently, and I'm just like floored. How much? It was just constant, constant. I always tell kids, when you go into an art museum, and you can remind yourself of this, right? And you know this as a, as a creator. You see about 10% of what they've created, but it took the other 90% to get there. 90%, right? We know that. Like, what is the whole thing about hours of work? It takes X amount of hours to actually get the project done. I mean, 10% is what we're actually seeing, but it took all that other 90%. When I see kids being so pressured of like, I failed on the first attempt, and I'm like, the first attempt? You're at one, brother. Like, come on, keep moving. Keep moving. You've got thousands to go. Maybe, maybe not thousands, but... It takes time. These artists, we don't even know that about them because we, we hang up their best work and we're like, ooh. And I'm like, but they've got thousands sitting here. But it, you got to keep making. That's what I remind, right? you got to keep making, keep making, keep making to find it. So as I always love to say, what is happening inside the art room is connected to everything outside the art room. It's connected to everything. My favorite emails are when it was a middle school and I'm going to like, I literally was like, oh, the day is perfect. I had an art teacher, I don't know how it was coincidental, say, hey, I'm using your, uh, your, uh, one of your episodes. I love it. It's really cool. Uh, it's on Delta Foss. It's awesome. I get an email, uh, uh, like, t like literally the same day, it was weird, from the science teacher who was like, hey, I found this episode and we're using it. I'm like, what? Yes. Yes. Two totally different subjects are using my content. Yes. Like, thank you. That's what I want. We've got to connect the dots, right? I love it. We have to show what's happening. You guys know that, right? Creativity is happening. I always tell kids, and I'll tell you in a minute, I don't care if you're an artist. I really don't, which they're usually like, <gasps> I thought he was here to convince me to be an artist. But I love, this is what I kind of, kind of all my DNA of creativity. I, I just, I love looking at this because I'm like, it's just, it's interwoven. Creativity is interwoven into every discipline, science, all of it. I don't know why we create the silos we do and separate it like creative peoples, the Excel spreadsheet people, right? <laughs> What? Like, that's just not how it is. So I mentioned Delta Fawcett. If you watch one of those episodes, probably my favorite. Um, Andy, who helps me film, he's in here somewhere. Uh, man, we tackled this one. They did a great job. We really wanted to show the creative process. And Jordan, who's an industrial engineer there, it was awesome. Talking about getting inspired by, like, that, you know, that moment of the percolator on your desk, right? Like, this one was a, a, they got inspired by a Kit Kat bar. This one up here, you can't really see real well. They were inspired by a butterfly. They actually go out and just like take trips and go get inspired and make faucets out of it. <laughs> and so then I got inspired and I was like, oh, let's make something with, um, what if I took color pencils and put it around a faucet? I don't know, like, I always want color. So it looks like a dead duck, but anyway, it's a faucet. <laughs> um, I had a kid tell me that, that was like a dead duck. I'm like, yeah, you're right. So. Um, this guy's Einstein, and I know it's like stereotypical, but you know, I loved it. Dropped out of high school, just, you know, a lot of them actually, Picasso did the same thing, and I shouldn't ever share that with kids, but um, I, I always love his quotes about imagination. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination, which is a pretty big deal considering he's pretty intelligent. I think it's interesting that you read a lot of these famous scientists, you read a lot about these famous artists, and how important, right? Imagination, creativity, attempts, time, failure, go for it. Like, it's just so important. And I always like this. I used to have this on my desk as an art teacher. I would blow it up if I had it. I think I threw it away at some point. You ever seen one of these? It was a successor, I believe. <laughs> and it's the think outside of the box guy, right? Now, if you use that phrase, don't feel bad and go, and like Nate's making fun of me now. If you want to say think outside the box, great. The reason why I don't like saying it is because it separates again. It says, oh, well, the creative people, they go outside the box. So what's with all the rest, right? I was talking. So then everybody else is cattle, right, <laughs> inside. But I am creative, and I'm outside the box. Um, I, 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 I hate that model of thinking. I really do. And so what I always tell kids, this is your sweet spot. Get in the middle of it. Be creative with everyone around you. Get inspired. Work, right? We know this, we know this stuff. We know it works. And I'm like, that's, I just don't like that thinking. Um, so anyway, fun fact here. Uh, the census, most recently taken, 500,000 people claim they were artists on their census. Now that, you know, take it for what you will, but nonetheless. Now, if you took that information and had each one of those people make one painting a year, just one, that means we would have 15 million new paintings per generation. I always tell this stat because the pressure to be an artist 
like I said, is pretty severe. And I always tell kids, you know what? The chances of you, like the MBA, right? Like it could, you know, maybe it could happen. I'm not trying to tell you not to do it, but you know what? I don't care if you become an artist, but I would do, I am obsessed with making sure is that if, <laughs> if you can survive school or you can survive that adolescent time and you can believe that you are creative, that is a skill set that you have, even if you cannot paint, I don't care if you're a teacher, a lawyer, an engineer, a doctor, whatever, if you're creative and innovative, you just got 10 steps closer to getting that near. You, you, oh, it's just so important. And that last quote you saw, creativity is just connecting things. I, don't, I think we overthink it, right? Creativity is not so difficult to understand. We've put it, you know, the art museums are great. I love it. But that's why I love getting outside of the art museum often. I love going to the Jordans, um, theater design, you name it. Like any, I just love watching people be creative and finding it in the weirdest ways. It's kind of like uh, the guy Dirty Jobs, right? Just, I wanna go around and find people being creative doing everyday things, because that's, that's where we live in, right? Um, and I always love to show this, it's not what we cannot measure that makes us creative, innovative, and unique. It's not measurable, and that's what stinks. But I actually kinda like it. And then I just showed this, um, a lot of times, this is me in my basement, and it's just a good reminder, um, I hope to kind of inspire you that I could like go down to WFY and I love it and use this really fancy green screen and stuff, but sometimes I want to get my MacGyver on. Anybody know who MacGyver was? I say this at school and people are like, MacGyver? You know? Um, and I'm like, but I just, I have it all on CD, DVDs. That's always like, what? Um, but anyway, but sometimes I love, like there's an, if you go watch uh, an episode that we did on Van Gogh um, and this painting of whether or not he actually painted it, it's got a really cool story behind it and I freaked out because Side note, sorry, you gotta watch the episode. The point is, I did it in my basement because I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it in my basement, I'm gonna do it with my cell phone. Just because I want the challenge of like, can I do it with minimal materials? Because if I'm gonna go to a kid's school and tell them, I want you to be creative, I always tell art manufacturers, this is really tough because I really need for you to help sponsor me, but I also know that art materials are expensive. And I want this to be, I always try, to, any project you see me do on the show, I literally stand in my garage and go, what would a kid have access to? Or what can they get cheap? Which isn't easy because I love art materials. <laughs> but I love just getting that on. And by the way, 20th Century Fox, the founder of that, uh, they, they actually owned that painting. And an awkward moment I had was an email from the granddaughter. <laughs> who, because I, you gotta watch it. Uh, she was really nice, but it just made me think of it. Uh, but that Van Gogh episode was total, like, just getting the MacGyver on. Um, and I don't know if you've ever seen this, again, just a picture outside of the, um, I'm sorry, Cliff Within, Steal Like an Artist, Life of a Project. I bet everybody in here, if you haven't seen this, you're gonna wanna steal it and put it on your wall, t-shirt it, whatever, tattoo it. I always love this. Best idea ever, Dark Night of the Soul. How many of you guys get there really quick? I do. <laughs> Can I be honest? About two nights ago, at about 12 o'clock, Dark Night of the Soul was that. Like, I'm like, this isn't gonna work. I don't know what's happening. I'm scared, like somebody's gonna get hurt. They're gonna impale themselves. Anyway. Um, and I love this. It's done and it sucks, but it's not as bad as I thought. A really f smart friend of mine always said, if you put a project out and you feel absolutely awesome about it, then you waited too long. You need to feel weird. It needs to feel like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, get it out there. Get the stupid prototype out there. Um, no, this is not a ploy to buy my t-shirts because honestly, I made it so we don't make any money um, because I really just want people to wear them. And this one, we have ones that say, and, as you guys, I got to hear Graham last, was it last time? Yeah, he's awesome. Um, but through uh, United States, point being is we have some that say outrageous with Nate, which is great. These are my favorite, is I am creative. It's a bold statement, it really is. And I know it's gutsy like to ask somebody to say, wear that, but you know what, I want, I love it, like own it, oh, own it. You are creative. I want kids to own, I would give them out to everyone if I had the chance, take a big amount of money, but the point is, I, I want people to believe in that, and it's so, so important. Um, last but not least, I'm gonna be selfish here. I, I said at the beginning, I deliver content to PBS Digital Studios. I did not say they pay me to make the content. Uh, PBS, as you can imagine, you know, we're just, dr you know, just drowning in cash. It's amazing. Um, uh, false. <laughs> the point being is, 
through a lot of like just local support, Marianne Glick, like I'm not even saying this, she's my, one of my favorite humans on the planet. She's a great painter, by the way. She's just a great human. She's been crazy supportive. Uh, man, Crystal DeHaan, others who have been so helpful. But point being is, um, it is it is a mystery. I, it's the Wild West. If you guys know anything about YouTube and content, when I started this, speaking of Mr. Rogers, he was in the sweet spot. Actually, I'm kind of mad at him because he started when it was just like, put it on TV, right? It's at 4.30. Who watches anything at a specific hour? No one. No one does. Hence why we are delivering via YouTube, curiosity.com. But you know what the hard thing is? Is trying to gain the support and prove the platform works. But that is where the audience is, right? So, selfishly, if you don't mind, tell people, please, about our program. Um, I'm always trying to find funding. I'm trying to get my, our program out there. I'm trying to keep it here because I love saying that I am from Indianapolis. Um, I can't thank you enough, though, for coming down, the time. Um, it's, yeah, YouTube, Outrageous with Nate, you know, all the, the hashtag Twitter. I like, on, honestly, Instagram because it's visual, so. But I'm on there a lot. But point being is, if you could help spread the world, the world, to the world, I would super appreciate it. But that is all I have, and thank you so much, guys, for coming down. I just appreciate it.